So let's go over the uh, basic critique process within Microsoft Teams. So we have, uh, of course, to meet with a bunch of students as we do, but now we're going to do it in a virtual setting. And of course, you can go over to the calendar over here and schedule a new meeting. Invite everyone on your team to that meeting at a certain time and place. That's probably the best way to do it. Uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to return back to my team. Meet now. And of course, I'm the only person here. So it's just me. Hello, everyone. So what happens when I open my share tray? I've got all these options over here. Turn camera off, mute, open share tray. This is what I'm going to use as the facilitator of the critique. And I'm going to click on that one time. And it will bring up all these little windows here. What I'm looking for is this where it says desktop and screen number one. And what I'll do is double click on that. Everything appears to go away. I could give control to someone else, but I don't want to do that. I want to keep control for myself. Makes things a lot simpler. Go back down here to the lower right hand corner of my screen. Might be different for yours. Click on this. And now the whole class can see my screen. And I can tell that that's happening because if I go back down here, it says stop sharing. There's an X. And if I click on that, it will stop sharing. Uh, this is a little bit confusing because I am recording the screen as part of the tutorial. So it's hard for you guys probably to see what's happening and that there's anything different happening. But if you join my test team or create your own test team and have a meeting and test this whole thing out, you'll see what's happening a lot more clearly. We're in the meeting, I'm sharing my screen, and we want to start looking at some student work. I'm going to go back over here, click on the team, make sure we're in the right team. Now all these channels are visible to everyone. My screen is sharing. I can go, we can see right now, oh yes, we're we're meeting, that's what this little icon down here means. Um, so I can click in the Eric Gellert channel and I'll say, hey Eric, you're student one, let's go over your work first. We can look at his channel for the entire semester. What I think is really cool is you can show, you know, work in progress from the entire course and go back and see how it's changed over time from one stage to the next. Uh, I could click on one of these pictures that's already uploaded in the channel. Uh, brings it up. You can see that there's a magnifying glass so we can even look at further details. Depending on the size of the image, you get more or less detail. You can zoom more or less. Right? Uh, say Eric really wants to look at this sculpture video. We are not going to be able to look at it here, but we can always go over to files and videos are available in the files. These are all the files that are in that post channel. Uh, to make it a little more clear, I can always go over right here where it says all documents, hit this little carrot down, more options, and hit the tiles button. And we will see all the the things that are in the posts and I could click on this and we could view the video as a group as well. So I'm going to go back over to the posts. If I click right back on this channel, it takes me back to posts. Uh, we can have a little discussion. Other students can chime in. It's probably easiest to toggle back and forth between this channel here. And you can see over here, this is the meeting window. So this is where we have all the people's faces who are in the meeting. And I can click back over here at any time and we can all meet back face to face. 
Uh, if I have my participants clicked right here, these little Lego figure looking guys, it'll show me anyone who's in the meeting. Um, and as we're discussing, people can raise and lower their hands. This is not currently in view, but when you are actually in a meeting, there will be a mute all button. So a lot of times you'll hear someone, some weird things rustling around or something in the background and you can hit the mute all button and ask people to, to then unmute themselves to contribute. Uh, a couple other things. If before the meeting starts, someone hasn't shown up, if I go to the more options button in this participants uh, area, I can ask to join and that will send them an invite in case they missed their calendar appointment that we've set up uh, to do the critique in. A couple of other things, if things are really slow, uh, slow moving and if people have difficulties with their connections, have them all turn their camera off and when we're Going back and forth, look, I can always click back over here, hit the Teams button. Now we're back in the channels and we're just looking at all these still images that are already uploaded and people are gonna have a lot less difficulty if they have poor connections in participating in this entire process. Click back over here and we can all meet in the tiled view of all of our participants. We can raise and lower our hands you can chat, have a conversation on the sidebar, um, have people express themselves that way as well. A couple other things, if things are slowed down, if, if you're on the Global Protect VPN network or whatever v VPN you have, disconnect from that and it will speed things right up. And that's about it. Um, this is where Joining the test team or creating your own test team and actually trying this whole process out is where you're really going to learn. You can watch this video up teen times and probably get only so much out of it. So this is a very creative process. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you have any questions, let me know. Okay. Thank you.